Do you enjoy pollution? Do you enjoy eradicating the local ecosystem? Do you enjoy thinking? Then do I have a game for you, Factorio, a game about giving up your soul for the factory must grow. Wait, let's try that again. Factorio is about where you give up your social life for a faster green circuit production. Okay, one more try. Factorio is about... Factorio is about... Auto about harvesting a planet of its resources, constructing a mega giga chat factory expanding across its great manifest destiny, leaving an absolute huge crater in the ozone layer, demolishing and leveling an entire forest, and much, much more. Hi. Welcome to a video about Factorio, a game about automation, sleep deprivation, and low malnourishment. But at the end of the day, it's all worth it. Except for that day, in reality, was actually a week. Because remember, 5 minutes in the factory equals to 1 hour in real time. So if you're not ready to take the Factorio pill, good. But maybe take some time and think about it, for a bit. Then when you're ready, come back and take it. So now that you're ready, let's go. I didn't want to make a whole section in the video about world settings, there's other videos on that topic that you could go and watch, but what I'll say to those who are new and first time triers at Factorio and want to have a good time learning the game is to disable enemy expansion and increase the starting area size in the enemy tab, and disable pollution in the advanced tab, just to help with the biters, or keep all default and learn as you go, and once you're done looking for a nice world, you can now enter the factory. You crash land on an alien world with one task, to construct a rocket and leave said planet. Okay, okay, how? Well, you crash land with a few items, and among those items are a furnace and a burner drill, also some ammo. The drill can only be placed on the following ore patches, iron, copper, coal, stone, and uranium. But that one comes later on in the game, so just focus on the first four. So you place down the drill on one of the patches, only to realize that it needs fuel, which can either be wood, so chop, 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 or coal. A pretty fast way to get coal is from large rocks, because in addition to the stone, you also get some coal. Or I mean, you could just mine the coal raw if you're into that kind of stuff. So you bring back the coal and now your drill is powered. Then you place down the furnace right in front of the drill, give it some coal, now it smelts the iron ore into iron plates, get a few going, and while you wait for more to smelt, go and mine some rocks for extra stone. Now you can make more drills plus furnaces to have an even higher output of items. After placing down a couple of drills, you might look at them and start to wonder, how can they run without the need of coal? Oh, would you look at that? Electric mining drills. But you need electricity for those. How do you get electricity? You take water and coal, combine them together in a boiler, get some steam going, and boom, you have electricity. Now the factory has begun, and just like that, the game starts to implant you with the factorial virus. Non-curable, so I've heard from a friend. After some time, you might be wondering to yourself, what to do with all these brand new items? Well, science. Unfortunately, your first few science packs will be handmade, so with those handcrafted science packs, you want to put them into these funky disco domes and start your first research, automation. Because after all, this is Factorio, a game about automation. By now, you should be having inserters grabbing and placing items onto belts and leading it down a main bus. A main bus is just four belts side by side so that you can have underground belts going across. And the main bus is just going down one main way so that you can branch off it and make little modules that are basically sweatshop factories where it only produces what I want and it always constantly makes more 24-7. Just gotta be a good dictate. I mean, just gotta be a good boss. For the most part, your modules will be making various types of potions, or as the game would like to call them, science packs. You have seven in total and each required to research the next one, plus many other things. You already have red science, now it's time to add green science because both are fairly easy to make and can be made together in one module. Now this is where the real fun starts. You don't want to be in your world idle just thinking of ways to make a layout for the module. Instead, you can make what I like to call a blueprint world where you disable biters, go in a sandbox, enable cheats and god mode, and now you can test out all the ways you want for a module. You don't have to do this, but for those who enjoy doing trial and error with peace of mind and no biters or problems, plus you have all the items at your disposal. It also helps you understand how to make items so there's no bottlenecks in your production line as well as how to have your assembly machines set up. Hell, even how to understand trains and solar and nuclear power. Because just trying to understand trains, blocks, and chain signals was a lot easier in that world, even though I still have no idea what I'm doing in my main world. Once you've got all your blueprints done, you can now go place them down all over your main world, and hopefully you've made a blueprint that'll make you gray science, because you're gonna need it. Depending on the settings you put for your world, you might be familiar with this sound going off from time to time. If you're not familiar with that sound, then that's the alarm going off when the biters are on your land and destroying your factory. 
Each thing in your factory gives off pollution, and the biters don't like pollution, but simultaneously they feed off of it and evolve to become bigger, stronger, and scarier biters. Also, the pollution causes them to send out raiding parties that try to take down your glorious factory. There's a few ways to combat this, and even a few ways to help prevent it from happening. During early game, your best friends are most likely going to be turrets, as they can be both used either defending or attacking. Oh, also walls. Walls are very good too. An easy way to ensure that those pesky little biters don't intrude on your factory later on is to wipe them out early on. So early on, start by having some ammo automated and stockpile a few stacks. Get some turrets going and maybe some walls, or a couple of walls actually. If you have a car made, good. Use it to scout out an area for the nests. If you don't have a car made, you should get started on that. Most of the biter nests early on aren't as hard to get rid of, and it's best to get rid of them early on since they haven't evolved yet. Once you've scouted out for all the nearby nests, get the ammunition, get the turrets, get to know the troop and strat, and finally go to battle. You don't have to go for every nest, just enough so that when you expand your factory, you have the space and safety to do it. Plus, later on, you'll have better and more effective ways of getting rid of those biters. Just don't wait too long. After you're done giving out eviction notices to the locals, you can now focus on expanding. But first, walls. And defense, because you want to secure your area from future attacks. So expand your walls far, but not too close to biter nests. Once you're done walling off the intruders, you can now start to expand your factory. So mining drills, expanded. Furnace array, expanded. Main bus, expanded. Bottlenecks, uh, this is fine. It's not hard, but not easy to fix a bottleneck. The main issue with them is that it's hard to spot and difficult to find a new way that will not only resolve the bottleneck, but also fit inside the space it's in, in case your factory is spaghetti. You can always go back to your blueprint world and see what you can come up with, or find other plans people have made on Reddit and YouTube, and there's quite a few. And maybe you can try to change some so that will work best in your factory. But always remember that when playing Factorio, you may think adding a new module to the main bus will only take a few minutes. But because you've added that new module for blue circuit production, now you're running low on green circuits. Because in order to make blue ones, you need 20 green circuits and 2 red circuits, which take 4 extra green circuits. So you try to fix this by having a larger green circuit production, but now you're running low on copper. So you go to your copper, and it might be the splitter's not set up right, or the furnace array is too small or the belts haven't been upgraded yet, or the copper train drop-off is slow, or the train import is too slow, or the train itself is too slow. Whoa, it kinda got lost in the factory there. But anywho, more important matters to take care of. Biters. If you get another alarm for biters, you should be more than fine and ready to take on another round of giving out eviction notices. Hopefully you've also been expanding your military research and science. So get everything ready, tank fueled and loaded, power suit charged, fighters located. Once the final prep has been done, it is now time for war. Now that you're done forcing the local natives to sign your peace treaty, it's back to the factory. If you want true automation, then you'll need bots. Construction and logic bots both help grow the factory automatically. Well, as long as you have the necessary items within the bots building area. You can have it set up however you want. You can have the bots in your inventory with a personal roboport and a modular armor. So the bots are always with you and whenever you place down a blueprint, they start to build it. If you have the items in your inventory. The other way is with roboports, storage chests, requester chests, and a few others. I went with the easier way, which is with the personal roboport, mainly because I haven't set up a logistic network yet. It's difficult, alright? My brain can only get wrinkly. It's, it's a lot of knowledge and science in this game. It's a never-ending loop of researching new crafts and designing a better and more efficient blueprint, and the occasional biter attack, unless you've gone full nuke on them. But anywho, back to the bots. The harder way is with roboports and these five chests. If you want the factory to literally build itself, you'll need to know how to have the roboports and all these chests set up correctly. You have storage chests that the bots can pull items and put items in, but you don't have much control as to where any of it goes. Most you can do is put a logistics filter on the chest if you only want one type of item inside. Then you have the rest of the chests. 
Like I said, I went with the easier way and having the bots just pull items from my inventory, plus I feel most who have a full logistics network have a mega base or in the process of making one. I made plans for a mega base and even set up power lines and secured a pretty large area for it, but I knew that if I were to go for a full mega base, I'd be in the factory for months and this video would never be made. I need an end, and speaking of an end... If you're not focusing on a mega base factory, then the last thing for you is rockets. And we're not talking about this, or this, we're talking about this. This is the last thing you do, mainly because it's literally the last thing you can research, but there's three things you need to make. First is the rocket silo, because how else are you going to launch your rocket? Second is the rocket itself, and last is the satellite. To make the silo, you'll need 1k concrete, 200 electric engines, 100 pipes, 200 blue circuits, and 1k steel. And hopefully you have enough blue circuits made because you're going to need a lot of them. You don't have to put down hazard concrete, but I like it and it looks cool to me so I put it down. When you place down the silo, you can put a satellite into the cargo, but you can't launch just yet. There are still a few things left before launching. You'll need three different items, all to craft the rocket itself. Rocket control units, rocket fuel, and low density structures. Some people who have brains plan this already and have the items made and ready for the rocket. Those without brains don't have it planned and now are waiting for the items to be made. But once that's all done, you get to see your marvelous rocket rise and now it is time to launch. And there you go, just under 70 hours of playing, I finally beat the game. Ah, my glorious stats, how nice. It was a nice run, but GG no re. However, it's not the end. Well, I mean you did beat the game, and the game even said so. But you can still continue because this game has no actual end. Your research can go to infinity, so if you want to min-max your item production and get the most efficient and optimal factory possible, then you can. You could spend eons in Factorio. The virus has no cure. We can only try to resist the calls to the factory, but we'll all come back to it eventually. But yeah, anywho, that's the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed making it and really enjoyed playing Factorio, but I need to take a break. But maybe later I'll do a train world or a death world. Who knows? Only way to know is to subscribe, but that's up to you. It, it, it's free, just saying. But yeah, if you did enjoy it, maybe leave a like or dislike if you disliked it and comment saying why you disliked it or liked it. Also, go check out my Twitch. Link's on the screen and in the description. I might be streaming Factorio right now too, or another game. <laughs> Who knows? Only way to know is click that link. Come on, you know you wanna. Please. Oh, spirit. Spirit.